You see, this says man has it right there. I didn't do that. Yeah, it's not yeah. My fault. I wasn't even in the vicinity. Did the president file his taxes yesterday? Do we know? I'm sorry. I, I'm not his accountant. I'm his economist. And, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't know this. anything about his taxes. The popularity of the tax reform plan still shows up only about 40% mm -hmm. of Americans approve. Why is it still net negative after more than a year later? I actually, uh, Jim Tankersley uh, and a co-author, and I'm sorry I forget the co-author's name, but, but they had a piece in the Times yesterday where they talked about that very issue. I thought it was kind of interesting. It suggested that there was a lot of negative anti-tax propaganda that was produced and, and effective. Uh, the fact is that the tax cuts worked as planned. You know, we've, we've produced a lot of uh, evidence of that. And so I think that in the fullness of time, people will recognize that. And, and, and it's not just, you know, in the U.S., if you look at it, it this is something that I, I talked about at Tax Policy Center a long time ago uh, during the tax debate, that Syriza in Greece, you know, a key uh, part of their economic platform was to cut the corporate tax rate. Uh, in order to foster growth in, in Greece. Well, well, Syriza, that I have a, a Greek uh, person, economist uh, on our staff, and, and she told me that their, their party's name translates into the radical party of the far left. And so, so if the radical party of the far left supports policies like ours because they recognize the evidence that it's good for the economy, right. then I, I would guess that in the fullness of time, everybody, everybody will, will recognize it. But, but again, the time, the time suggested that, that there was a very effective propaganda campaign right. against, so uh, the, against the tax cuts. Well, you know, I think that, that in the end, uh, and this is uh, in Politico, sorry to cite uh, an interview of myself, but in Politico, we talked about this, I talked about this with so Ben White, and, and the point, <laughs> the point is that uh, the sentiment that matters for the economic outlook is things like the Michigan survey, uh, the NABE survey of, of business sentiment for small businesses and stuff. And, and so that the sentiment that matters is really, really strong. And so if you're, if you're wondering about, like, are people happy about the economy, uh, then they're way happier than they were in 2016. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, that, again, maybe the way that I think about it best is that that the CBO thought that job creation in 2018 would be 58,000 a month, uh, and it was in fact 206,000 a month. And everybody's very happy about that. You can see they're very pleased about the policies. You know, my view is that the difference, uh, the extra couple million jobs created in 2018 were attributable to the policies that we pursued. Uh, if somebody has some alternative theory, I'd like to see it. But my well, guess is it, that it won't, it won't pass peer review. I'll come over to you in a second. I'll just work. There, it's something that we've been following closely, uh, and you know, our our view was that uh, because of uh, the Q model of investment, uh, that there wouldn't be much of an effect on on uh, prices, on home prices, and uh, Zillow has uh, some evidence that that's that's pretty true. And and, and it's actually the the you, and there are other home home price websites, but if you go and if you look. Uh, in places where there are high taxes, you could do this yourself. Just go look at the homes, and then they have their estimate of the home price, and they give you the history of it. And so, so you know, I, I was just yesterday again because this came up, looking at a whole bunch of different towns all around the country and looking at the history of their estimates of the prices, which are based on actual transaction prices. And even in like California, real estate, you know, which is one of the places you hear the state and local deduction is hurt. Real estate prices are up uh, over the last year. So, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'll let him go next. Yeah, 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 that's so, Brian. Yeah. In response to the criticism from some of your friends and, and, uh, that are economists, the criticism against this administration has been that it, the policies in effect are socialism for the rich and uh, capitalism for the poor. How do you respond to that? How does this administration respond to that criticism? I, I have a really hard time contemplating like the premise that would produce a question like that. It's uh, there's well, no socialism. Yeah, <laughs> I would have to. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I, I, I can't imagine what the person's thinking that would say something like that. There's no socialism anywhere in our policy, but and, don't, and so. Don't be exceptionally rich. If we look at the. Uh, uh, they pay the highest tax. marginal tax rate. And it, don't it's, they get bailed out by the government more often? You know, corporations than do people. There, there's no government bailout on our watch. Uh, it, it, wait, I told her she was next. And then, and then, uh, Did you help convince the president not to close the border based on studies of economic Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't comment on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are there any changes or concern about the nomination of Herman Cain and Stephen Moore? Does that what is the Right. So, so, so again, it's something I, I said in a gaggle last week, which is just that, that these are uh, nominations that are in process. 
Uh, with me, the president asked me to be CEA chair, and then I did about two months of paperwork and FBI background checks and stuff, and then they formally sent my nomination to the Senate, uh, which then acted woefully slowly <laughs> on it, if you could look at past CEA chairs. But in any case, uh, they're in that process right now where they're gathering up the facts, and, and during that process, it's appropriate for me as CEA chair to not comment on the nomination. Yeah. I, he, I think he got in first, and then I promise I'll cut you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the latest jobs numbers we have were pretty darn strong. You know, we're averaging 190-ish, almost at the 200 pace of last year. Um, I haven't looked at the. Yeah, if there's news from ADP, I haven't looked at it. No. No, and, and, and the way to think about it is there's an enormous amount of momentum in income. Uh, and if you look at, you know, at the CEA Twitter feed, you could see that even like the bottom 10 percent had wage growth last year of six and a half percent. Uh, and, and so what that means is that weight incomes this year are a lot higher, and so eventually consumption will follow. And so maybe there's a pause after Christmas or something like that, but incomes move slowly. And so if you get a pay raise in January of 6.5%, you're getting that 6.5% higher income for the whole year, and so then eventually that's going to make you consume about 6.5% more, and it's one reason why you can be very optimistic about growth this year. And if growth continues at that 3% pace, then job creation should be in the 150 to 200 range. And it, I promised him next. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. So, Sorry. Actually, Sorry, Brian. That's actually yeah. also Brian's question. You said there are no bailouts going on on your watch. Mm -hmm. How then would you characterize the uh, payments being offered to soybean farmers and, and other farmers who have been impacted by uh, tariffs imposed in retaliation for the president's tariffs? Aren't those bailouts? The, the, those are existing policies that address specific trade actions and Secretary Patu has been, you know, following the law that, you know, exists and predates this administration. How, how is it not a bailout to pay soybean farmers and other farmers when China does I think you should ask him, is that a bailout? He says, <laughs> <laughs> Listen to everything he says. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I take your question seriously. I apologize. But, but I think that, that for me, uh, that a bailout would be if, if there was some failing thing and then we you know, marshaled government resources in an unprecedented way to bail them out. That, that's what a bailout is. If we're just enforcing existing laws, I wouldn't call it a bailout. I, I, would, I would say it's just normal policy. When the president tries to get the Tennessee Valley Authority to buy coal from one of his supporters and then keep a coal plant open, so would you call that a bailout? I'd have to study that, that specific yeah, policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question. Can you give us a quick update on the uh, president's but, yeah. thinking about Facebook and privacy? And have you guys done any analysis on sort of the Facebook effect on the economy? I, I would say that the, the thing that is, is sort of bubbling in, in the tax community all around the world is the question of digital taxation in the international community. A lot of our European partners have been planning actions and so on. And so, so in the digital space, I think a lot of the things that we're doing, studying the hardest right now are, are you know, exactly in the 21st century digital economy, what's the appropriate treatment of, uh, of digital firms? And, and a lot of, uh, like the EU countries, India, that they're getting ready, I think, to swashbuckle in that space. And it's something we're studying closely. But that, that's the thing that has me at CEA most yeah, occupied right now. Question. You said yeah. when you were talking about the increase in our economy still rising, mm -hmm. Talking about a percentage of six and a half. You're assuming, right, that people will spend that and not save that. If they save well, more. saving is higher too. Uh, but but yeah, that's but that's right. Normally, what happens, especially if you look at uh, people from the median income down, they consume a very high share of their income. Uh, and, and so when income growth is highest for people in the middle and the bottom, which it is right now, then that should make you very bullish about consumption. I, I think I have time for one last question, if there is a last question. Thanks, Matt. Okay, yeah, thanks, thank you. Okay, well, thank you all for thanks, coming around. Yeah, thanks. And by the way, Jared Burns. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. But he's the one that was talking about uh, oh. socialism at the top and capitalism at the bottom. Yeah, Jared had a stroke. I know. And, but, I, but he's doing better now. I have to